Hi everyone. I am Dr. Soundara Raj. I am very happy to interact with you all through this video. This is one of the very important videos in the subject cost accounting. I would firmly say that every learner of cost accounting should be thorough with this particular theory part which is titled classification of cost. These are all a couple of details related to my career. After you watch the full video, if you find the video useful to you, give a like to the video. Kindly do subscribe my channel and enable the notification so that you will get the notifications of my future videos on commerce and management subjects. Classification of cost. Cost classification is nothing but the process of grouping costs according to their common characteristics. We identify a set of common characteristics among the costs incurred based on the common characteristics we group them and call each group as a type of cost there are a few bases on which cost can be classified they are according to the elements according to the functions according to the nature or behavior according to controllability according to normality and according to the relevance to decision making and control. So these are all the bases on which cost could be easily classified and understood by anyone. The first classification is nothing but classification of cost according to the elements. Based on the elements, cost can be classified into material, labor and expenses. Further, material could be divided into direct material cost and indirect material cost. Similarly, labor could also be divided into direct labor and indirect labor. And regarding expenses, that could be divided into two categories. One is direct expenses and the other one is indirect expenses. The total of the direct material, direct labor or direct wages and direct expenses are collectively called as the prime cost. When we total the amounts of indirect material, indirect labor and indirect expenses, we could name the total as overhead, which could otherwise be called as indirect cost. Overhead is again subdivided into factory overhead, office overhead and selling and distribution overhead. It depends upon the stage where the indirect expenditure is incurred we could identify it either related with the factory or related with the office and administration or related with selling and distribution activity. The second classification of cost is based on the functions. The cost classification here is done under four major functions of the business. The first function is production. The second one is administration. The third one is selling and the fourth one is distribution. See, according to the functions, cost could be classified here. What is the meaning of production cost? The cost of sequence of operations which begins with supplying materials, labor and services and ends with the primary packing of the product according to ICMA. It is also known as manufacturing or factory cost incurred in converting the raw material into finished product. Hence, we could easily understand the fact that the expenses that are incurred in the conversion of the raw material into finished product is nothing but production cost. The meaning of administration cost is nothing but the cost of formulating the policy, directing the organization and controlling the operations of an undertaking which is not directly related to a production, selling, distribution, research and development activity are a function. This is what said by ICMA. So administration cost simply means that the expenses incurred but are not directly connected with the conversion of the material into finished product. If any expenditure is related with the conversion of material into finished product that could be named as production cost. Whereas this one is related with the administration mostly incurred in office. Administration cost is incurred for overall planning, organizing and controlling of the activities of an enterprise. The third type of cost according to the functions is nothing but selling cost. It is a cost of seeking to create 
and stimulate demand sometimes termed as marketing activities and of securing orders so any expenditure incurred to create demand to attract customers to promote the product to motivate the prospective consumers to come and buy the product and the expenses incurred in relation to securing orders are all collectively called as selling cost selling cost are also known as selling expenses and selling overheads which really comprise of all the expenses of the selling department including the product promotion or service promotion advertising and other sort of marketing communication the next type of cost here is distribution cost it is a cost of sequence of operations which begin with making the packed product available for dispatch and ends with making the recondition return the empty package if any available for reuse this is according to icma so i could easily say that the expenditure incurred in relation to the distribution of the product from the point of the production to the point of the consumption and not only that the expenses incurred to bring back the reusable containers and package which could be reused in the manufacturing and production process it is also known as distribution expenses or overheads which comprises of packing warehouse expenses storage cost of freight etc there are a couple of other terms which have been defined by icma let us have a look at the meaning of those terms research cost This is a cost of searching for a new or improved products which could be manufactured by a business enterprise or identifying a new application of materials or identifying or inventing new or improved methods of production so the expenses incurred in connection with all these aspects or activities could be named as research cost the next concept to be discussed here is development cost having made the research about the new product about the new method or about the new utility for the existing material the management decides to produce the new or improved product or to employ the new or improved method method of production method of selling method of distribution or method of promotion in general the cost of process beginning with the commencement of the formal production of the product or by that method is called the development cost so obviously development cost is incurred after incurring the research cost the next classification of cost is according to the nature of cost based on the nature of behavior the cost is classified into fixed variable and semi variable what is the meaning of fixed cost i would firmly say that fixed cost in total remains constant irrespective of the changes in volume of production whether we make use of 50% production capacity of the plant or we go up to 100% production capacity of the plant no issues there are certain expenses to be incurred without any change in total the expenses could be like rent depreciation salary etc what is the meaning of variable cost it is a cost which tends to vary directly with the volume of output it is a cost per unit remains constant a good example could be the cost of direct material cost of uh, direct labor cost of uh, direct expenses etc now for manufacturing one unit of the product if we put in the material valued 5 rupees for manufacturing two units of the same product we need to spend 10 rupees towards the cost of material so it varies proportionately according to the changes in volume of production and that is why it is beautifully named as variable cost now what is the meaning of semi variable cost semi variable cost varies partially it is partially variable or we could say it is partially fixed it doesn't vary proportionately according to the volume of production a portion of this particular cost remains unchanged because of the changes in volume of production whereas the remaining portion of this particular cost will vary proportionately but in total this cost doesn't vary proportionately like variable cost and that's why it is named as semi variable cost the next cost classification here is based on controllability 
On the basis of controllability, cars can be classified into controllable cars and uncontrollable cars. What is the meaning of controllable cars? This is a cars which can be influenced by the action of a specified member or activity of an undertaking. A good example what I have mentioned here is nothing but change in the quantity of direct material because of a labor. When the standard quantity of material to be used for producing every single unit of a product is say for example 2 kgs. If he makes use of a quantity which is more than 2 kgs, obviously this is going to affect the total cost. However, this could be controlled. If the performance of the particular laborer is improved, he can very well perform up to the standard which is expected and keep the consumption of the material to the standard quantity which is nothing but 2 kgs. Therefore, this is easily controllable. And what is the other example I have given? Number of direct labor hours. If a laborer is expected to produce every unit of a product in one hour time, he should produce it within that stipulated time. If he makes use of the time which is more than one hour, it stands for increase in cost. If he improves his performance and meets out the standard and able to produce the product within one hour, definitely this particular expenditure could be controlled and that is why it is named as a controllable cost. And the second type of uh, cost under this classification is uncontrollable cost. This is a cost which cannot be influenced by the action of a specified member of an undertaking. This is just opposite to controllable cost. What is a good example for uncontrollable cost? Change in price of direct material in the market. Obviously, we don't have any direct control over the price changes of direct material in the market. And similarly, change in the labor cost is out of the control of a particular business enterprise. So these are all good examples for the cost, the type of cost named as uncontrollable cost. The next classification of cost is based on normality. This is a cost incurred in the conditions in which output is normally attained without any problems or the output is normally attained in the conditions that we have already planned or established. The normal cost is included in the cost of production whereas abnormal costs are not usually incurred at a given level of output in the conditions in which that level of output is normally produced. When certain expenses which are not expected incurred, those expenses are collectively named as abnormal cost. The abnormal cost is generally excluded from the cost of production. Perhaps I would say the abnormal cost will bring down the profitability of the organization. It doesn't get included in the cost of products manufactured. The next classification of cost here is according to the relevance to decision making and control. Based on the requirement of decision making, the following is the classification we could learn. The first one is shutdown cost. It is a cost incurred irrespective of plant is in operation or is shut down. For example, in a situation where we may not be allowed to manufacture product probably due to the government regulations. The government might order our organization to go for shutdown for a particular period. So during that period, production cannot be taken place. However, certain expenses such as rent, depreciation need to be met out. That expenditure is known as shutdown cost. The second type of cost here is sunk cost. It is a cost which is incurred in the past and which is not at all relevant for any current decision making. A good example over here is return down value of the plant which is irrelevant for the replacement of the machinery. The third type of cost here is opportunity cost. In simple terms I could say that it is a cost which is related to the sacrifice made or benefits foregone by choosing another alternative. Let me come out with an example here. See in front of a person there are two opportunities available. If he goes for opportunity 1, he can earn 1000 rupees per hour. If he opts for opportunity 2, he can earn 1200 rupees per hour. By choosing the first opportunity, he foregoes the yearning related with the second opportunity. 
the yearning related with the second opportunity 1200 is forgone because he has opted for the first opportunity therefore the opportunity cost over here is 1200 rupees it is a cost or it is a benefit which has been forgone by the particular person by not choosing the second alternative the next one is about imputed cost it is a notional cost which is not really incurred but it is worth to be considered for calculating the real profitability a good example here is Though we don't pay rent for our own building in which we run the business, or though we don't take salary for our labor which is put in in conducting our business, it is good to consider these costs to find out the real profitability of the business we run. The next type of cost here is out-of-pocket cost. There are certain expenses incurred and paid from our pocket. But there are other expenses which are named as expenses but not really paid out of the money from our pocket. A good example over here is depreciation. Depreciation is a permissible expenditure to be deducted from revenues to calculate the profit. But do we pay anything in the name of depreciation? We don't pay anything at all. Therefore, depreciation is an expenditure which doesn't involve any cash payment. So this is not an out-of-pocket cost. Whereas salary paid is an out-of-pocket cost because it is an expenditure which is met out out of the money from our pocket. And the next type of cost here is replacement cost. It is a current cost at which an asset which could be replaced by an identical alternative. So it reflects the present market price of the asset by which we can replace an existing model of a machinery or model of an asset. The next type of cost here is conversion cost. It is a cost incurred in the production process for converting the raw material into finished product. What are the examples for this cost? Cost of direct material, cost of direct labor, cost of direct expenses and overheads which are incurred in the conversion of raw material into finished product. The next one is about product cost. What is the meaning of product cost? It refers to the cost which are identified with the product and included in inventory values. They can be charged, allocated or apportioned to the products. They include direct material, direct labor, direct expenses and manufacturing or production overheads. Product costs become part of the inventories like work in progress, value of finished goods and become part of an item in the balance sheet as such side. Product costs of goods sold is a part of the cost of goods sold. Product costs do not affect the income till the product is sold. Only when the products manufactured are sold, product costs come to influence our profitability. The next one is about period cost. Period cost is related with the particular period. It could be like rent paid, taxes paid for a particular period, etc. So, period costs are incurred for a particular period. Their benefits are usually exhausted with the expiry of the specified period. They are totally detected as expenses during the particular period in which they are incurred. The period costs are necessary to generate revenue but they cannot be identified with the units of the product because they are not related with the direct manufacturing or production of the product. Perhaps they are related with the period in which products are manufactured. Hence, it cannot be identified with the, the unit of product. Period costs affect the income irrespective of the sales. It is not like the product cost which we discussed just before. Product cost could influence the income and the profitability only when the concerned products are sold. Whereas period cost is not directly related with the sale of the product. It is related with the period and hence it is considered in the profit and loss accounts prepared for a particular period of a business. I hope you understood my explanation over these important concepts which could be collectively named as classification of cost. I suggest the learners of cost accounting to watch this video for a couple of times and listen to the examples which I have given to make you to gain better understanding over each and every type of cost according to the different basis. Thanks for your time to watch this video. I'll meet you guys in another video. Bye for now everyone.